In the first game they were starting off with, uh, I don't know that we're going to get that unbelievable theater in this one. But we have UTEP on the road at Sam Houston State. The home team Bearcats are three and a half point favorites in this game. Carries an over-under of just 36 and a half points. That's low even by NFL standards. That might be on par with what we're getting from Iowa in the Big Ten West here. This game kicks off Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. We're getting really nasty with this one. Real gross. The 127th and 129th ranked teams in points per drive. So if you're a fan of offense, avert your eyes. A loss here likely ends UTEP's bull bid. And if Sam Houston loses, they are definitely out of bull bid. Uh, if you can come back from starting, what are they, 0-7? Uh, good for you. I, I think their bull bid's probably long over. But I think a loss here absolutely mathematically seals it. Uh, the Cade McConnell experience... It burned brief and bright. He completed less than 50% of his passes for uh, less than five and a half yards per attempt last week. The talent's there. He's only a freshman, but I don't really view him as the dangerous gunslinger that we saw in that first quarter against FIU. I think that was just a, a fun little surprise that we're probably not getting back from UTEP for the rest of the year. It's still unclear if Gavin Hardison goes. He's been out for three games, but he's clearly the best quarterback on this roster, if not consistent. That's not really much of a high bar to clear, though. UTEP is rushing on about 60% of its plays over their last three games, so the game plan's clear. But the offensive line isn't really getting a push. Deion Hankins has the second most rushing attempts in Conference USA, but less than a third of his yards come before contact. That's telling me he's, uh, he's a workhorse, he's, he's running over tackles, and, and just kind of getting the yardage himself since the offensive line isn't really paving much of a way for him. The difference between these two teams, though, Sam Houston State does generate quality possessions, even if they don't always finish them. UTEP... Well, they don't do either thing well, and I think that's why you're seeing the Bearcats remain the favorite here. Not only that, but actually getting action whenever this line touches three. Sam Houston State money comes in and pushes it to three and a half. Uh, they're throwing the ball much more with Keegan Schumacher now, and he's getting yards despite them shortening his throw. So it used to be a lot more down the field stuff with a lot lower success rate and by extension a lot fewer yards. But now they've kind of brought those throws closer to the line of scrimmage. He's letting his receivers get some yak, make some plays, and he's doing a lot better. Uh, that's an improvement in the scheme, in my opinion. You're looking at Noah Smith, their top receiver. They're getting him way more involved. Before week five this season, three games, he had 11 total targets. After week five, he's averaging 13 targets per game, Kelly. So they're getting him much more involved than they were before. And it's clearly working, even though they're 0-7. The offense isn't as bad as it was to start the year where it took him three games to score a touchdown. Uh, they actually adjust his role according to the opponent, which is something you see in very innovative coaches. A lot of coaches are, this is my scheme, this is what I'm doing, I don't care what players I have. Not Sam Houston State. So if you look at his average depth of target, it was only 3.1 yards against Liberty, but the very next week it was 11.8 yards against New Mexico State. So they're looking at Liberty. Hey, we're going to try to get you in space. We're going to get you the ball being extension of the run game. Against New Mexico State, you know what? I think we can throw you the ball a little bit downfield uh, more. They also move him inside and outside, different splits every game. He's very versatile. I'm really liking what they do with him. But uh, what do your numbers say about this one? Yeah, Brett, you said it's uh, it's real gross. Yeah, real gross is right here for this one. And just to just to confirm or clarify, so Sam Houston with their transition to FBS, they wouldn't be going bowling regardless. Oh, that's right, J bowl band. Yeah, J no, Jacksonville right. State's <laughs> going to find that one out the hard way, unfortunately. Yeah. James Madison as well. But UTEP, you're right. You know, already two and six on the year, they've got to win out. It's disappointing because coming into this year, my numbers gave UTEP a 43 percent chance to go bowling. That's now down to a less than one percent chance because. Not only are they going to be a protected underdog here, as, as I'm going to talk about, but in each of their remaining games. I mean, they still got Western on the schedule. They still got Liberty on the schedule and a trip to Middle Tennessee. So it's probably just not going to happen for UTEP this year, which is disappointing for a team that I thought, you know, was almost a 50% chance to, to make a bowl coming in. But this game, Brett, talk about gross, has a watchability score of 3.1. Uh, it makes it a top five sicko game of the week. So for all the sickos out there who really like to, to, to dive into these lowly rated watchability score games, this is one for you. Um, I really thought Sam Houston was going to get their first ever FBS win last week at home against FIU. Just wasn't meant to be, Brett. They fell 27-33 in overtime uh, to, to FIU. The model now thinks, though, that that's going to happen this week. I have Sam Houston minus four, so a little bit more than Vegas. I can understand why. When it touches three, it bounces back up. It's a 61% win expectancy for the Bearcats. Neither of these teams, Brett, has been power rated better than number 116 all year. Currently, Sam Houston's number 120, UTEP's number 122. 
The Sam Houston offense, currently number 131. Uh, it's been bottom three the entire year. It spent four weeks as the worst offense in the country. But you're right. It is better than it was at the beginning of the year. And I think my numbers uh, speak to that as well. The UTEP defense is currently number 117. That's a season low. So slight edge to UTEP on that side, ever so slight. Uh, the UTEP offense is number 119. The difference for me in this game is the defense here for Sam Houston. Uh, I have them number 70 nationally in this game. It's the only unit that is top 115. Plus, this game is in Huntsville. Uh, bottom line, Sam Houston minus four, 61% win expectancy for the Bearcats, and they get, they get their first ever FBS win. Boy, you said you thought that was coming last week. Uh, if if I had the ability to to project graphics onto here, which I could hit screen share, but I'm not going to do that to our graphics department, uh, you should definitely go look up ESPN's win probability graphic on right Sam Houston State FIU. It is a almost vertical line at the end of that game. Uh, that that was a lot of fun. But that that's like what Conference USA has been this whole Tuesday. Like it's not a lot of fun. If you're betting on it because you're sweating it out, but it's a lot of fun. Just it's just good theater. It's great TV. I've I've actually really enjoyed it. I uh, yeah, you said it. UTEP's not really a good football team. They're not really playing great right now. But that said, on this side of three, you're looking at 36 point over under against a winless team that's had some very unfortunate finishes. I think UTEP with the points is probably the correct side on this one. Uh, that that's the way that I lean. Just from a uh, you, you know, it's not a team versus team thing. This comes down to like a. Uh, betting mechanics and and just kind of understanding the situation of of what we have here. Um, Yeah, probably UTEP with the points for me. Uh, That's a gross one, though. Really gross one.